My name is Virginia Gallagher and I'm the owner of Hot Asana Yoga Studios. I'm here today to lead you through a 60 minute power vinyasa style class. Vinyasa being movement with flow. And we're going to start our practice comfortably seated. Now you can take a posture much like I'm in. This is easy pose, like Indian style when you were a child. Or if it's more comfortable on your knees, you could slide your knees in front and your hips onto your heels for a variation of hero pose. So take a moment and settle into whichever of those feels best for you. And this being our first posture, our first asana, sit up very tall. Imagine in your mind's eye that you can see your spine and begin to stack one vertebrae on top of the other. And as you do that, creating space between each of them. And you feel you've lengthened as tall as you can. Bring your shoulders back and let your shoulder blades slide down your back. And then bring the line of your jaw back so that your ears hover over your shoulders. Close your eyes. You can take mudra here, and if you have a mudra practice already, take whichever you're working on. Mudras are postures for our hands. If you don't have an active mudra practice, you may set hands down on your lap as a gesture of grounding, or you might set palms up as a gesture of receptivity. placing the wrists beneath the shoulders and the knees beneath the hips. Look back at your knees and align the feet behind them. The feet should not be visible. And if they're not, they're aligned. Empty your breath. And when you inhale, let the lungs fill, the rib cage open and the diaphragm expand, belly drops down, gaze lifts up. And on the exhale, arch the upper back, push the air out, send the spine high, and tuck the tail. 
keep going back and forth between these postures, inhaling heart forward and gaze forward, and exhaling spine high. And each round of breath, each cycle, a higher arch in the upper back, moving the shoulder blades away from one another. And then a deeper dip in the low back as the gaze lifts and the tail lifts. One more of each. And then back to neutral, back to your table pose. On your inhale, tuck your toes under. And on your exhale, lift through your center to send hips up and back into downward facing dog. Begin to pedal it out, to walk it out, to alternately bend your knees in one at a time. And feel this in your calves and in your hamstrings, and even on the bottoms of your feet. Then add into it the hips swiveling side to side so that when the right knee is bent in, it crosses over the center line of the left knee. And when the left knee is bent in, it crosses over the center line of the right knee. And you move that stretch that was in just calves and hamstrings up into your low back and into side body. And the next time that the right knee is bent in, leave it in, push the left heel down and pull the left hip back, gaze under your left shoulder. And then right heel down, left knee cross the center line, right hip back, gaze under right shoulder. And come to center to send both of your heels incredibly high. And lengthen from your wrist to your shoulders and from your shoulders to your hips and from your hips down to your heels, pressing into downward facing down. Move forward into plank pose, drawing strong into your center, shoulders into their sockets, and exhale back downward facing dog. Inhale to move forward into plank, shoulders over wrists, shoulders into sockets, heels pressing back, belly lifted. And exhale back downward, facing down. Step your feet wide until they're off of your mat. And feel a wide leg down dog, tail up and chest down. And then walk your hands back in between your feet for a wide leg Uttanasana forward fold. You might catch a hold of opposite elbows to hang ragdoll or you might use your second and third fingers, your peace symbol fingers around your big toes, elbows widen and top of head down. If this is too much on your hamstrings, a simple bend of the knees will break the back line. If it's not enough, hips high, elbows wide and head down. Now release your hands, bring them around to your low back, interlace your fingers and drop your pinkies overhead to stretch your shoulders out. Feel the shoulders rotate through the sockets and then release the hands down to your mat and walk forward into plank with wide legs, drawing strong into your center, bend your elbows back and hover in a chaturanga. Push back up and hips back downward facing dog. Step your feet in to hip distance apart. Lift your gaze and either walk or if you feel ready, hop your feet in between your thumbs. Inhale all the way up. Palms together and thumbs to your heart. And then ready for sun salutations for Surya Namaskar. Inhale, arms high. And exhale, arms wide, swan dive over, crown of head forward, hips back, fold. On your in-breath, lift halfway and look up. And on your out-breath, bend the knees if necessary, bring your forehead towards your shins. Inhale to lift halfway up. And on your exhale, lunge the right leg back. Looking down to be sure knee is over the ankle and the left leg and pushing back to the right heel. 
lift the heart and lengthen the head forward. Flatten the palms and step back to plank and lower all the way onto your belly. Slowly feel your arms brush your body. Untuck your toes and on an in-breath, cobra, lift your eyes, your chin, and your heart. And on your out-breath, forehead down, tuck the toes under and push up. Reverse chaturanga into plank and back to downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg high with a closed hip. And exhale, right foot to right thumb. Lunge. Lengthen from crown to tail. And step your left foot up. Exhale to fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive, bending the knees, reach high. And exhale, swan dive over. Inhale brings you to a half lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, knees bend, left leg lunges back. I'm feeling lunge through your legs, look at your right foot, inhale. And when you exhale, straighten the right leg, Parsvottanasana to stretch the right hamstring. Inhale, bend your right knee to feel lunge through your left heel. And exhale, straighten your right leg, Parsvottanasana. Inhale, bend your right knee and it's lunge. And when you exhale, stepping back, plank, lower again to your belly. On the inhale for cobra, lift the eyes, the chin, the heart, and the hands. And exhale, forehead down, toes tuck under, push up, and hips back, downward facing dog. Left leg high with a closed hip, and left foot to left thumb, lunge. Inhale, looking at the left foot. Exhale, straighten your left leg. Inhale, bend the left knee, pushing back through right heel, lunge. And exhale, straighten the left leg, hamstring stretch. Inhale, bend your left knee, lunge. And exhale, step to the top of your mat and fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. And exhale, all the way over. Inhale, halfway lift. And when you exhale, fold close. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, right leg steps back, lunge. Now ready your legs and pick your hands up. Reach the arms back, lengthen fingers back and head forward. And when you inhale, arms sweep forward to reach. Exhale, hands down and plank. Lower to your belly. Cobra pose, lifting the hands with the heart. And exhale, forehead down, push up and back downward facing dog. Right leg high and right foot to right thumb, revolved lunge. Right hand, right thigh twist, stack the shoulders, lift your gaze and sweep the right arm high. Right hand down and left leg steps to top of mat. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way. And exhale, swan dive over. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. And exhale, left leg lunge. Ready your legs and arms go back. On the in-breath, sweep the arms forward. And hands down, plank. Lower all the way down. Last cobra. And exhale, forehead down, push up. Hips back, downward facing dog. Left leg sweeps high. And left foot to left thumb for revolved lunge. Right hand stays grounded and left hand, left thigh twist. Shoulders stack, gaze lifts, left arm reaches. Left hand down and step forward to fold. Inhale up. And exhale, hands to heart center. 
Inhale, arms sweep high. And exhale, swan dive over. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, half lift. And on your exhale, step or jump to plank. Chaturanga tricep push-up into upward facing dog. Back for downward facing dog. And inhale, right leg sweeps high. Exhale, step through, lunge. Ready your legs and sweep the arms back. Ready your core and sweep the arms up, crescent lunge. Hold here or exhale, back bend. Bring your palms together and back knee down to your mat. Salute forward, head to knee and hands to floor. Inhale, lift up, keeping long through your sides and exhale, back bend. Hands come down to your mat to frame the right foot. Tuck your left toes and sweep the right leg high, three point pose, where you can hold or three legged vinyasa. downward facing dog and ready for the other side left leg sweeps high step left foot to left thumb and strong in your legs sweep the arms back on the in breath sweep up crescent lunge and you can hold or on the out breath backward bend palms together back knee down to your mat gently untuck the toes and salute forward head to knee hands to floor Inhale, sweep high, and exhale, back bend. Bringing hands down to frame the left foot, tuck the right toes to send left leg high, and hold or three-legged vinyasa. Downward facing dog, and one more each side. Inhale, right leg high, and on the exhale, step through to lunge. In breath, arms sweep back, and on the exhale up to crescent lunge where you can hold for the inhale and exhale back bend. Palms together as the back knee comes down gently to your mat and salute forward. Inhale for lift and let the exhale bring you into a backward bend. Hands down framing your right foot. Tuck the left toes under, sweep the right leg through and high to hold or three-legged vinyasa. downward facing dog. Last one, left leg sweeps high. And left foot stepping through. Inhale, arms back. And exhale, up. Hold for inhale, and exhale, backward bend. Palms together, back knee down. And salute forward. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, backward bend. Bringing hands down to mat, framing the foot, tuck the back toes and sweep leg high to hold or three-legged vinyasa for intensification. Downward facing dog, a long breath in and a slow breath out. Gaze between your thumbs and step or jump to the top of your mat. Inhale all the way up and ready for the warrior series, exhale, swan dive over. Inhale for half lift, and when you exhale, fold in close. Inhale, lift up and look up, and on your exhale, step or jump to your plank, vinyasa through chaturanga, upward facing dog, and back for downward facing dog. Ready for Warrior One, Vira Bhadrasana One, right leg high. And on the exhale, open Warrior Two. Now hold strong and steady. Lift the inner arch of back foot. Knit the rib cage together. And then modified side angle, bringing right forearm to thigh and left arm up where you can stay. Or slide your right palm all the way to the inside of right foot. Parsvo Konasana. And you can take this as extended, bringing left bicep to ear. 
or you might choose to bind, bringing top arm behind you and bottom arm beneath you. You can hold this pose or for intensification, step the back leg in for a bird of paradise. Picking the right leg up. Shoulders stabilize over hips and then extension through the lifted leg. land your bird and step back. Release hands everyone and we'll meet in downward facing dog. Long breath in and push your chest through your arms toward your thighs. Long breath out. Left leg sweeps high for the other side and left foot steps through, warrior one, virabhadrasana one, spinning the sole of back foot down, bring your body up. On the exhale, opening, virabhadrasana two. Modified side angle, left forearm to thigh and right arm high. Where you can hold or intensify, coming into parsvokanasana, left palm to inside of left foot. Extended side angle would bring right bicep to ear. And perhaps bound side angle with top arm behind you, bottom arm beneath you, catching a grip and stacking your shoulders. Bird of Paradise is an option if you'd like to step the back leg in. Pick the front leg up. Finding stability in your base. Extend flexibility through the lifted leg. And release the pose. Downward facing dog. Preparing for Parvita Trikonasana Revolve Triangle Pose. Sweep your right leg high. And when you step through, step through just halfway so right foot lands beneath the heart. Spin the sole of back foot down and inhale to stand, straightening the legs. Bring your right hand to your right hip, encouraging it to stay back in line with the left one and lengthen through the left arm on an in-breath. On your exhale, reach forward and place your left hand at right shin, foot, or floor. Find stability and then rotate into the revolved triangle, shoulder stacking gaze lifting and perhaps right arm extending. Release right hand down and step back to downward facing dog. Pedal your feet out. And then settle both heels down into the mat for the other side, left leg sweeps high. Left foot steps through just halfway, again landing beneath the heart as you ground the sole of back foot. Inhale to stand, drawing the inner thighs together. Left hand to left hip. Inhale length through the right arm. And on the exhale, coming forward and down, creating the base for this pose. When ready, revolving open. Gaze lifting and maybe arm extends. Feel the inner thighs draw together. Feel the higher hip lower down in line. And release downward facing dog. Vashi Stasana pose next, side plank. Move forward into a plank posture and place the left hand directly under your face, feeling wrist beneath shoulder for maximum stability, and turn to open right. Elevate the right hip so that there's an arch beneath the body. You can always, if necessary, drop the bottom knee down for additional stability. Or to add intensification, maybe lift the right leg off of the left. If you have a practice that includes grabbing your big toe and extending the leg to straight, you're welcome to take that intensification. And downward, facing dog. 
drawing strong into your center to move to the other side forward into plank setting the right hand beneath you and opening the pose left make whatever adjustments you need up to and including if you need modification right knee down or intensification left leg high take whatever expression feels best for you and downward facing dog a long breath in and as you exhale lift the sits bones and spread them push your chest through your arms and then gaze between the thumbs bend your knees and step or jump to the top of your mat and pressing down through the feet on an in-breath sweep the arms wide and high bringing palms together and your exhale lower thumbs to your heart Inhale, sweep right leg high and step all the way through right foot to right thumb. We'll take prasarita here, so turn to the left and wide leg forward fold. Heel toe your feet in or out to feel the hamstring stretch that's appropriate for you. And if this is too much, bend your knees to break the back line of the body. If however this stretch feels good, you can lift the sits bones up and widen them. As the body relaxes, let the head come down. And if the top of your head nears the floor and you have an active inversion practice, you're welcome to take Shirshasana. Landing Shirshasana as you're ready. Bend your right knee and come back to lunge. When you come to lunge, drop the back knee, untuck the toes, and place your right forearm on your right thigh. Good. Now reach your left arm back as the left knee bends, catching a hold of the foot, and give yourself a quadricep stretch. And then release the foot down. Frame the right foot and step back, downward facing dog. Inhale to sweep the left leg high and stepping through for prasarita. Other direction, walk your hands right. And on this side, we'll take some twisting. So set your left hand under the face and straighten the left arm. On an in-breath, sweep the right arm high, bringing the right shoulder over left and send your gaze all the way up to your right thumb. On your out-breath, thread the right arm underneath left and reach for your left thigh, shin, or ankle. Extend your left arm forward to create a kickstand for your body and inhale to lengthen through the spine. As you exhale, begin to twist. And then unwind the twist and set the right hand underneath of your face. Straightening the right arm on an in-breath, sweep the left arm high, looking up to left thumb. And on an out breath, left arm sweeping underneath of the right, reaching for thigh, shin, or ankle, and sliding your right palm forward to stabilize the body. Inhale to lengthen, and exhale, twist open. Unwind your twist, and a wide leg downward facing dog feels wonderful here. So walk the hands forward. And let your hips come forward of the heels until you've settled and anchored through your hands. And then inhale, and when you exhale, push the hips back in line with the heels and chest through the arms. And keeping the feet where they are, walk the hands back toward them and reach your hands around behind low back, interlacing 10 fingers and pausing to roll the right shoulder back. And then roll the left shoulder back and with the space created in the upper chest, let your pinkies drop overhead toward your mat. Feel the shoulders rotate through their sockets. A long breath in. And exhale, pinkies closer to the mat. Release the hands, bend the left knee, walk your hands forward to frame the left foot and bringing right knee down, left forearm to top of left thigh. Reach the right arm back, 
and catch your right foot. And draw the foot in to stretch the quadricep. And release hands down to frame the left foot. Stepping back to your downward facing dog and we will vinyasa here. So inhale forward to plank. Exhale chaturanga. Inhale upward facing dog. And exhale back for your downward facing dog. Look between your hands, put a bend in your knees and a step, jump or float to top of mat. Inhale, sweep high. And on the exhale, swan dive over. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, fold in. Inhale, half lift, and preparing for Padahastasana poses, bend your knees and glue your chest toward your thighs. Reach your arms around behind you, elbows behind the calves, and catch your feet either underneath the soles of feet or around the heels. And then drop your face to your shins, and it's important to keep the body glued together. So if the hamstrings do allow, you can lift the sit bones up to straighten the legs knowing that it's all right to have bent knees if needed. If your legs are straight, you can start to rock weight toward the toes to challenge yourself in the posture. Steady breath. And bend your knees to release the pose. An inhale releasing hands to lift halfway up and exhale to folding close. Inhale halfway up and on your exhale vinyasa through your plank, your chaturanga, upward facing dog and strong pull back to your downward facing dog. We'll move into trikonasana triangle pose so right leg sweeps high. Right foot steps through to right thumb and spin the sole of back foot down. Straightening both legs, set your right hand to right shin and open up through the left arm. And feel this stretch through your right ankle and through your right hamstring. And feel the length that you're creating in left side body from hip to shoulder. To refine the pose, Match the length on left side with length on right side between hip and shoulder. Fingers energized. And then bring the left hand down. Frame your right foot with your hands for Parsvottanasana, intense hamstring stretch. You'll need to step your back leg in just a little bit, enough to be able to straighten the legs and square the hips. And inhale, roll your spine to straight, and then exhale, lowering the rib cage over the right thigh. Squaring off through the hips. And this pose will transition into our first one-legged balance, into Ardha Chandrasana Krismacharyan style. So put a little bend in the right knee and anchor through the right hand. Lift your left leg up parallel to the mat. Flexing at the left foot stabilizes the lifted leg. And when you're ready, left hand to left hip. If you'd like to, left arm can extend as the shoulders stack and the hip stack. Intensification might include lifting the bottom hand up to your heart. Release hands down, bending the right knee, softly lunge the left leg back and step into downward facing dog. For the other side, left leg high. And triangle trikonasana, left leg steps through, spin the sole of right foot down. Straighten through left legs, left both legs and left hand to left shin, right arm up. Strong through the legs, length from wrist to wrist. And 
Parsvo Tanasana, intense hamstring stretch. Frame the left foot with hands. Step the right foot in as much as you need. Finding square hips, bringing rib cage over the left thigh. Chandrasana, Krismacharyan style. Weight into the left hand. Right leg lifts parallel to mat. Lifting the arches of both feet will help engage the quadricep muscles and stabilize the legs. And then find expression through your arms. Up to maybe no hands at all. Release, bending the left knee, lightly lunging the right leg back, and a step to downward facing dog. And the release of this pose will be different. Instead of bringing our feet in between our hands, look forward and step or hop your feet to the outside of hands for Malasana. Malasana pose, Hindi squat or garland pose, is a hip opening pose hands together over your heart allows you to push your triceps or your elbows to your inner thighs, creating more space, more openness. And this pose can be held anywhere from a few moments to one or two minutes. And if you do have a block, you're always welcome to place that under your hips if this is too much for you. If you would like to take a variation into a firefly or titibasana pose, you could place hands down and walk them back. Letting your fingers and toes be pointed in the same direction, pushing down through the hands, drawing into your core, lifting the feet up off of them. Firefly. Malasana. And then hands to your mat. Lift your hips up, but leave yourself folded over in a wide leg Uttanasana, empty breath. We always want to inhale as we bring the head above the heart, so oxygen coming into the body as the head lifts. Empty your breath here, and when you do inhale, arms sweep up, palms move together, thumbs lower to your heart, release. We'll move into standing balancing poses next, so position yourself where on your mat you need to be for standing bow, somewhere to front third to halfway. And from mountain, moving all weight into your left leg, spin the right wrist, elbow, and shoulder open away from the body, external rotation, and bend your right knee to catch your right foot, ankle, or shin from the inside. And then inhale to reach the left arm high, and on your exhale, kick back to express into the pose. Eyes above the hand and hand above the heart, equal and opposite energies, reaching and kicking. Release. Switching arms, switching legs, stabilize through the right leg and spin the left elbow, wrist and shoulder open. Take your grip at foot, ankle or shin. Inhale, reach and exhale, express your posture. Reach and release back to Tadasana, back to your mountain. And we'll move into Vrikshasana into tree posture. So stabilize through the right leg, place the sole of left foot just above the ankle or on the calf or above the knee on the inner thigh. Just 
just being careful never to place the foot on the knee, protect the joints. Set your hands to heart center in prayer and settle into the pose. Holding here if you'd like or if you prefer an arm expression, you could always reach up through the hands. To express differently, you could open the arms wide. And if you feel the need to challenge balance beyond this, simply lifting the gaze, changing your perspective can change the pose entirely. Unwind the pose, bringing thumbs to heart as foot comes to floor. And then shifting the weight into the left leg. Place the sole of right foot at left ankle, calf, or inner thigh. Stillness is not the absence of movement. Stillness is the absence of conflict. Being okay if there's movement in this posture. Taking whatever arm expression feels appropriate for you. bring ourselves to the floor, but do so through a variation of Ukatasana. So set the ankles together and the knees and the calves and even the thighs and then place the palms together over your heart. Lift high through your heels and then a descent bringing hips to heels as if you're sliding down a wall. So keeping the head in line over the sacrum as you come all the way down. And when you're down, hands move to knees, opening them wide for bakasana, for crow practice. And crow is the pose of placing shins onto triceps to lift your feet off of the floor. If this is a new pose for you, you might even set your feet on a block and work on lifting one foot at a time. But eventually the feet will lift together, hollow the belly out and draw the big toes together and heels toward your bottom. might spend this next 45 seconds just working crow in and out of it. You might work, work a hold time, or perhaps you take it into an advanced variation of coming into Shirshasana. It's your practice. Find the place that both challenges and empowers you. off of your hamstrings and slide your hands in between the two. So hands behind the knees, between the calves and hamstrings from the outside. Draw the knees in and begin to rock and roll on your spine. We're going to make our way up to a downward facing dog. So you can come up and step back or you can vinyasa through. Move into a plank pose from down dog and lower all the way onto your belly. 
tuck the toes, take your arms by your sides, place left ear down and chin on right shoulder. Our floor series begins with back bending. And these back bends are designed to strengthen the core of the body. We often think of the core as just the abdominal muscles, but the core is everything that wraps around the torso, everything in the girdle of the body that supports the spine. So we'll begin with cobra pose. Place your forehead on the mat and your hands beneath your shoulders. Setting your fingertips back far enough that they're not visible from above, empty the breath. And on your inhale, lift your eyes and your chin and your heart and your hands. Lifting the hands ensures that you're using the muscles of the back and not pushing up into this pose. Steady, even breath and each bit of air in might lift you a little higher. And then exhale down, setting right ear to mat, chin to left shoulder, again arms by the sides and relax the body. Let the spine come to neutral in between each back bend. second set, chin to the mat and hands beneath your shoulders again. Empty the breath out and as you inhale lift the eyes, the chin, the heart and the hands and we'll focus on 80-20 breath here so you have 100% of air in your lungs, let out about 20% and when you sip in 20% fresh you'll lift higher and then let out 20% of air and strong through the back, sip in 20% of fresh air, lift even hot air, and then relax down onto left ear and chin on your right shoulder, arms by your sides, body is soft. Focused posture, chin to the mat and zip the legs up. So bring the big toes and the ankles and the calves and the knees and the thighs together, turning two legs into one tail. Extend your arms out by your sides like the wings of an airplane. Palms are down, empty your breath. And on an inhale, lifting the eyes and the chin and the heart and the arms and the legs. And using that same 80-20 breath, Letting out 20% of your air and pulling in 20 fresh. And again, letting out 20% and pulling in 20% fresh. Lift the legs higher, lift the torso higher. And all the way down onto right ear. Chin on left shoulder, arms softened by the sides. And allow your heels to roll away from each other. little mini savasanas between each back bend. The next locust will be a variation. Zipping the legs up, placing the chin on the mat, reach your hands behind you, interlacing 10 fingers at your low back, and pause to roll the right shoulder back and roll the left shoulder back creating space in the upper chest, empty the breath. And inhale to lift eyes and chin and heart and lift the legs and then reach the knuckles back toward your heels, opening the shoulders and use your 80-20 breath. And then your highest possible lift on your next bit of air in Exhale all the way down to soft, left ear on mat and chin on the right shoulder. All of these back bends have been in preparation for our floor bow. And we'll do two sets of that. Setting up, place your chin on the mat and bend your knees in. The first variation, traditional. You'll grab at your feet, your grip coming from the outside and fingers wrapping around just below the toes. Draw the knees and the ankles in line with the hips. Roll the shoulders back, empty your breath. And when you inhale, kick your feet into your hands. As 
you kick your feet into your hands, lifting up through the wrists and up through the toes. Shoulders back, sternum lifted. variation. Bring your chin to your mat and bend your knees in, but take your grip at ankles. And this variation allows you to keep the thighs grounded onto the mat. It's a chest opening pose. And so leaving the thighs grounded, empty the breath and on the inhale, kick the feet into hands as you push the hip points down. The pulling back through feet allows the chest to open. And a back bend is really a front body opening, so breathe into the length of the deep front line. Feeling all the way to the center of your body, thighs ground, feet kick back, and clavicle smiles. When you need to release, release down. the heart rate and here with the ear on the mat you can feel your heart beating into your mat you can hear your heart beating into your mat when we back bend we take external rotation of the femur bones and the hip joints so we're opening and we're closing in the back. We want to counter that with some internal rotation. So we're going to come up through a reverse chaturanga into plank and back to downward facing dog. Tuck the toes under, set the hands beneath the shoulders, chin on the mat, empty the breath, and then push yourself up reverse chaturanga, lift through your hips back to downward facing dog. And to bring that internal rotation, set your heels wider than your toes. Imagine that your kidneys are lungs and fill them with air. Breathing into and creating space in your low back, releasing, opening and softening there. And then bring your heels back in line with your toes and for pigeon posture, inhale, reach up through the right leg. And on the exhale, bring the right knee in behind the right wrist and the right ankle behind the left wrist. Walk your hands back toward your hips to lift the chest. And as you exhale, pigeon pose, laying your chest over your right thigh.
to release back into pigeon. Tucking the left toes under, planting the palms. Step your right leg back to downward facing dog. Pedal it out. downward facing dog, tuck the right toes and step back. Move forward into your plank for final savasana, lower all the way onto your mat and roll it onto your back. Extend out through the left leg and draw your right knee into your chest, interlacing ten fingers on your right shin. Relax the shoulders back. And flexing through both feet, notice as you breathe in, the belly rises up against the right thigh. And as you exhale, pull the thigh in closer to fill the space that's been created when the belly drops. Again, in breath, belly rises up against the thigh. And on your out breath, drawing the right thigh in closer. Several rounds of breath here, massaging the internal organs on the right side of the body. And then switch legs, extend out through the right leg, flexing the right foot. Feel that your right calf is grounded into your mat and draw the left knee in. Interlacing ten fingers on the left shin and with both feet flexed. The shoulders relaxed. The chest relaxed. Even the face is relaxed. And those deep breaths. As the lungs fill, the rib cage opens, the diaphragm expands, rises the belly up against the thigh. And the out breath, the exhale, the continual drawing in of left thigh to torso. And one more long breath in on this side. And long breath out. Draw the right knee up to meet the left and we'll take full wind removing pose where you can place your right hand on right shin and left hand on left shin or if flexibility allows you might grab opposite wrists or box the arms around the legs and reach for opposite elbows. And once you have your grip regardless of where it is relax the shoulders back. 
and continue to feel that rise and fall of belly against the thighs. And here, as we exhale and draw the thighs down into the belly, massaging all of the internal organs. feet flat down so the knees are bent and pressing down through the feet lift the hips up and shift them just about two inches over to the right and then allow both knees to drop to the left a supine twist extend out through the right arm and take your gaze over the right shoulder right arms perpendicular to body if you find that one shoulder is higher than the other, it can be helpful to press, press down through your elbows to pick up the lower shoulder, square them off, and set them both down evenly. You might place your left hand on your right thigh to encourage the knees over more. And twisting through your center, pull the right side of your ribcage to the right and your belly button down. back to center press down through your feet where you'll need to lift the hips up to bring them back in line with the rest of your spine and then press down through your feet to shift your hips to the left so knees can drop to the right and extending out through the left arm looking over the left shoulder feeling twist on top of left thigh to encourage a deeper twist and again if you have one shoulder higher than the other elbows can be helpful to press into to square the shoulders off every breath the twist deepens Press to the feet and lift the hips up to set them back, hips in alignment with shoulders and feet, and walking the feet in toward each other, Supta Baddha Konasana, recline bound angle pose. Setting your hands either by your sides or on your belly if you'd like to feel the rise and fall of your breath. To encourage deeper opening, you may press, press your hands to the inner thighs helping with some external rotation. The eyes close. The body softens. And take your awareness to the muscles of the inner thighs and take your awareness to your hips. And notice that a holding on in this pose can be a natural feeling not wanting to let the knees open too far. But instead, if you'll let go, if you'll relax, if you'll send your breath to where you find resistance, more opening can happen naturally. And this pose can be held just a short time or if you'd like, up to two minutes. allow you to keep your legs here if you'd like or as you're ready turning the palms to face the ceiling slide your hands beneath the outer thighs and close the knees together pushing your heels out away from the body to move into your final savasana setting your heels to the outer corners of your mat and relaxing the feet open softly Turn your palms to face the ceiling and feel free to outstretch the arms as wide as is comfortable on your shoulders. Lift your chest just a little bit and slide your shoulder blades together beneath your heart and relax the shoulders down so the heart is elevated, it is supported. Empty your breath. Slowly through your nose, fill all the way up. Feel as though you're filling the legs and the torso and all the way up to the clavicle. Hold your breath for a moment. And then softly, slowly 
gently release the breath and settle into Savasana. Relaxing at the ankles and the shins. Relaxing the calves and the knees. Relax your quadriceps and your hamstrings. And feel softness in your hips. Relax the muscles of the back all the way up to your shoulders. And relax the biceps and triceps, and the elbows and the forearms. And take notice of your hands. Sometimes we think that we're relaxed, but our fingers are still curled in, holding on to something. Allow your fingers to open. face and even the muscles around the eyes soften. And the tongue falls away from the roof of your mouth. And a complete letting go, a softening into just being here. possible to end your practice with. So at the end of your savasana, whatever time you felt appropriate to take, move your body over onto the right side. So leaving savasana, come into a fetal or a semi-fetal position drawing your knees toward your chest. You have left the pose of letting go and moved into the pose of new beginnings. Having spent this practice time letting go of what is not necessary, press down through your left hand and bring yourself up to comfortably seated. Ending the way we started. Bring your hands together in prayer over your heart and remember, recall the intention that you set before this practice. And then press your thumbs in toward your heart and hold them there. Feel your heartbeat back against your thumbs. lives be an expression of this great heart that is within us. <laughs>